What's up again there guys, Brian here, the Three Topics Gamer here to give you another episode of my weekly Q&A title, The People's Questions or Answer, a series of questions that have been sent to me over the past week. Uh, this episode was uh, a pretty basic episode, nothing out of the ordinary. There were certainly a number of questions I was able to answer in the comment section of the previous video, so if you don't hear them in this video, you know where to look. Uh, but, you know, there were a number of questions that, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think they work. And one that's going to be a pretty interesting story to go over, so uh, I'm excited to tell that story. So, uh, before I start with uh, the first six questions, I would like to hopefully ask you guys to, if you happen to enjoy this video by the end, do give it a thumbs up as well as press the subscribe button so you hopefully will enjoy this content and enjoy more like it moving forward. So, the first question of the episode, uh, and these are all regular, so first question comes from the Batman of New Gotham, and this is kind of a surreal one, and you want to know if there was any good reason for you to stop being a fan of Sony entirely, what would that reason be? Well, um, I would stop being a fan of Sony if they decided to quit being in the gaming industry, quit all and sell all of their studios and all of their resources to Microsoft. If they did that, well, that'll probably be the end of me being a gamer in general, and I'll have to probably start looking towards a new profession, so, uh... Yeah, that, that would be a good reason to stop. <laughs> Next question of the episode uh, is the funny one. And it comes from Brady Burke. And you want to know, have I made mistakes in my life that I wish I could go back and correct? Yeah, there's one mistake. It's a funny story. Uh, I was maybe 19 or 20. And my girlfriend at the time... And now mind you, this is when I was young, dumb, and in love, because I've been trying to go out with this girl for like five years, so, you know, having had just come back from college, uh, I thought I was ready for anything, but no. Uh, pretty much what ended up happening is she talked me into paying for her family's electric bill, which was like $200. And mind you, apparently her father could not pay for this bill, her mother could not pay for this bill, so she came to me. And I paid, so for like that one month, I actually paid for her family's electric bill. And ironically, I never even got a chance to meet her parents. So I didn't even get a thank you from them. So it was weird. Uh, my brother yelled at me when I told him this. He, I mean, he yelled at me saying, Brad, what the hell would you do something so stupid? It's like, well, you know, I figure it would, you know, it would help. Or, you know, maybe it would, you know, put me in her family's good graces. That was not the case, and uh, things only got a little bit crazier from that, and uh, I've been single ever since, so, yeah, I mean, I don't think it would change anything, but it's just kind of one of those things that it's just so dumb. Why did you even do it to begin with? It's one of those head versus heart moments, and when I was uh, around her, I, I had a lot of those moments where my heart was saying, you know, do this, but your logic was saying to do this, and... Nine times out of ten, I should probably should have followed my head. It, it would have saved me a lot of heartache. So, there's that. Next question comes from Zach Turf, and you want to know, Thoughts on Batman Beyond and would I want a movie? I like Batman Beyond. I think it's a great series. I would definitely put it like a top five favorite animated series that came out during that time period. A movie? I don't know. I wouldn't want a Batman Beyond movie now because it would be so weird. I mean, we're about to enter a period of time where... We might end up having four different live-action Batmans at one time. So wanting to throw in a fifth would just be out of place. I mean, maybe 10 or 15 years from now, go right ahead. But, yeah, not, not now. Next question comes from Kingzilla, and you want to know, how does it feel to inspire others to do their own versus channels or review channels or gaming channels? I haven't had too many people say that I inspire them to do something. I've, I've had a few, but not many. But it's kind of a weird feeling because I know what it's like to know someone and have them inspire you. It's, it's, it's kind of weird because you, you don't, you don't think, you, you don't, I don't mean, I don't have a very high opinion of myself and, you know, some people have, think higher about me than I think about myself. So the idea that just me doing something because I was inspired to do it from someone else, inspired them, is 
kind of fascinating because it's a crazy chain. It's like, you know, this channel inspired me to start doing this. I inspired this channel to do this. And then so on, someone, that person will inspire another channel to do that. And so it kind of keeps going. So in a way, I think it's a, I think it's a pretty cool feeling. Um... I wish I could know. I, I wish I could meet these people in person. That's that's the one thing I've at least have had a chance to do. Is I think I mean in, in my personal experience, I think I can openly say that I've actually elevated my status with the person who inspired me to start my channel from going from just someone she knew to just a fan to actually being a legitimate friend that we've hung out on several different occasions. I, it, but, but that took many many years. So uh, the only thing I wish I could do is have the opportunity to actually meet and hang with the people I inspired so we can make some memories together and maybe even do some videos. I think that would be very, very fun. That's something I wish I could do more. So yeah, I think that idea is actually a pretty neat. Uh, next question comes from uh, Rain932. He wanted to know, do I ever lose my drive to make videos? And if so, what do I do to get my motivation back? Well, this kind of has a connection to my previous question. What do I do? Well, um, when I lose my drive, it's I, I never lose a drive to do videos. It's more of like just trying to come up with different ideas or what should I do next. Um, and so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll usually do like a little video, just kind of taking in requests, just to keep myself busy, or I'll look at my tower of like some of you guys may know about this. I have like this three pictured tower of my friend Rachel and since she's kind of the inspiration for my channel I'll just kind of look like just kind of stare at her for like maybe a good 10-15 minutes which is not weird she knows about this but just kind of like what would she do what kind of video would she work on right now and then some of the we some of the best ideas most successful videos I've done were really just having a random idea just pop into my head while just looking at these three pictures and <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what I do, but I usually, but to, to kind of get away from like losing a drive, I just keep myself busy. Like maybe I'll watch a bunch of movies, maybe I'll just play some games, maybe I'll go out to like my my usual video game bar and play some retro games there. It's just doing some, I, I firmly believe that a, a drive stops when, I believe the only way someone could truly lose a drive to do videos is if they themselves are not happy with what they are doing. I'm very happy with what I am doing. I just need to keep the momentum going. But I think that just doing things and interacting with, you know, and doing different things, ideas will pop into your head. Some of the best ideas have pop into people's heads when they when they least expect it. And I think that once you have that idea and you really focus on it, your drive will come back. And that's happened to me several, several times over the past eight years that I've been doing my channel. So that's what that's the best advice that I could say. And that's just an insider to what I do whenever I need a not not necessarily get the drive back but when I need a project to put my focus on and then I can put my energy towards that video and then you know work move on to the next video after that so yeah and the last question of the episode comes from Jbat and you want to know am I excited about the upcoming rumored Metal Gear Solid remake from PlayStation 5, for PlayStation 5 I heard that rumor here's the thing I don't trust Konami with this property. I would be more excited if someone else wanted to do it, if like another developer wanted to work and make a Metal Gear Solid game, because I'm open for any interpretation. I just do not trust Konami. Like, let's be honest, they haven't made a Metal Gear Solid game in like five years. And we still do not know exactly what happened with the whole Kojima incident, but that was completely uncalled for. And it's just like, wh what can they possibly do? Like, at this point, like, okay, if you want to take the first... And that's the thing. It's not even the first Metal Gear game, like, in the storyline. It, it gets so confusing. Like, if you don't know how that series is, like, organized in terms of numbers, it's like, it's a complete mess. Like, like, like if, if anything, Metal Gear, the Metal Gear game you're talking about, is kind of closer to the end of the chronological story. Not, it's nowhere near the beginning. It's kind of, like, almost near the end. Um, but I... I, 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 they would they would have to they would have to make a pretty incredible game in order to earn my trust back. That's all I can say because right now I do, I just don't trust anyone doing anything with Metal Gear unless Kojima himself says you know what I'm not with it anymore and I don't want to do Metal Gear anymore. But from what I've seen, it looks okay. I would say give it a chance. I would only trust it if Kojima said to his fans, you know what, give it a, give it a chance. That's the only that's the only way I would I would be for it. But again, I, I do not trust Konami 
right now. They're gonna have to do something really, really impressive. And I'm not talking visually. Trust me. Would it like just because if, just because you take a game from the '90s and put it in PlayStation 5 graphics, that's not gonna be enough to win me over. Trust me. Looks can be deceiving. I've played several games that were very, very pretty that turned out to be really, really crappy games. And if you're not gonna do anything new or add anything to give it its own twist, what's the point? So, yeah, I. It's just, I mean, it is just a rumor. We don't know if they're actually going to do it, but if they were going to do it, they really have to impress me in more ways than just one in order for me to earn, in order for Konami to earn my trust again. So, and that is not going to be a very, very easy task. So that pretty much sums it up for the main six questions that were sent to me for this particular episode. I want to thank these six of you, as well as everyone else that actually sent in your questions that I was able to answer in the comment section of the last video. If you guys have any more questions you'd like me to answer in next week's episode, be sure to type them in the comments down below. But make sure you get them into me roughly before Wednesday around noon. And remember that it is only one, one question per person. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome. And I will see you next week.